All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with another rocket video. I'll be unveiling the new NASA SLS rocket by Estes. It's a brand new release and they've been doing pre-orders for quite a while now. And it just arrived today and I was anxious to get it and then get cracking into the opening the box and showing you guys what it looks like up close and personal. Uh, this is their 100, I'm sorry, 1 200th scale model of the space launch system. And they're discussing the new Artemis program, which is the new uh, moon craft that we'll be sending to the moon for the first time in what, fifth, uh, nearly 50 years. Um, again, it, it's, it's a 1 200 scale, so it's the same scale as the Saturn V rocket that they just debuted last year. So you make kind of makes you wonder if they've got a theme, like every year they might unveil a new 200 scale. You know, you never know. Uh, claims it'll fly up to uh, 350 feet on a C-53 or a C-63 also. So it's a pre-built, or they say pre-assembled and ready to launch. Um, again, this is not based on anything that currently truly exists, but this is the plan that NASA has to get us to the moon by using the SLS system. So based on what Estes and a lot of people anticipate NASA actually doing this will be what the spacecraft may resemble. So with that let's go ahead and crack it open look through the kit and then go out and do some flying. And you always want to take care when you open boxes especially the pre-built stuff you just want to take your time don't rush it don't rip if you feel resistance on anything stop analyze what's going on before you start ripping because that's how you break stuff okay looks like this whole unit slides out here here let's turn it this way so we ensure that nothing falls that we don't want falling out okay and there's a bag full of stuff at the bottom to include a looks like a display stand very nice it comes with another display stand or if these two form the clear fins I'll have to find out more about that and here are our instructions and parachute and that's it nothing else is in the box box is completely empty so I'll set it aside Uh, let's go through the manual first because I want to figure out what these things are. And if they are, in fact, stands, I want to use them now. They may be dual purpose. They might be a stand and for flight. I'm not sure. See, seeing though it's a pre-built, the instruction manual shouldn't be too exhaustive. In fact, it is only one sheet double-sided um, talks about step one is preparing the parachute but I'm going to tie my parachutes to a fish hook and use that system like I do on all my other rockets and talks about preparing for flight installing the engine okay so here we go they are two individual fin sets insert and push the fin units forward until they stop fin units are friction fit to remove pull in the opposite direction so they slip into the SRBs is what they do. The main motor slips into the main body tube and then your SRBs house the two uh, fin units. 
Important, fins must be used when launching the rocket. Okay, understood. Because this obviously does not use thrust vectoring. Okay, it does not mention the, a stand. So I'm gonna say that those clear fins are also gonna act as its stand while on display. You can see a little bit in the picture there how they look. So let's try it out. Let's uh, go ahead and remove the rocket from the packaging. And let me get these stands ready now. So they're ready to use when I get it open. Unlike the Saturn V, which comes with a designated stand, not for flight, it's interesting how they created this dual purpose fin set that is used for display and for flight. If you want to use it for display, if if you don't, you could just go ahead and get one of the little yellow display stands that Estes provides anyway. But um, okay, let's set those aside. Let's figure out how to do this as cautiously as we can. It looks like there's a cord here. And a cord there that we need to cut. Okay. That's one. And that's two. Let's see if that's enough to, to break it free. Nope, there was something hung up at the bottom. Oh, it's the engine hook. Ha! <laughs> the engine hook. There, if we, just so you know, when you open yours, look at the bottom here. You can see the engine hook is sticking out the bottom, so it gets hung up on that hole. So you gotta push the rocket forward to clear the hook, and then it'll slide up and then out, then pull the escape tower out from the nose section. Okay, let me see what's going on here. This is being a little finicky. Okay, it looks like the plastic is taped. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, it was just hung up on a little fin. Okay, so now the rocket is free of the box. Beautiful box as well. I wish it had like the launch pad, similar to what the Saturn V uses, but that's okay. So my first impression is they went all out on, on scale as far as trying to make it look realistic. Uh, everything feels structurally good. The SRBs are mounted solidly. Let's see, the nose portion, it's already pre-tied, similar to the way the Saturn V was. So the shock cord mount is pre-mounted. Let's see how far, oh, it's a long one. My goodness, that's probably, I'm guessing five times the length of the body. Wow, okay, <laughs> that's a lot of shock cord there. Which is good. The more, the better. Now, while I've got this out, let me figure out how to put the stand in. Again, I could do a center mount stand. Or I could probably utilize these clear fins. Now, it's a shame that they do require this because these fins don't feel light. So, there's added weight involved. It says push them until they stop. But I guess it felt like it stopped. So, I guess that's it. Okay, let's see how it stands. Okay, not bad. That's pretty stable. In fact, that's very stable. Let's see if I can get the shock cord mount reinserted. I will say there's going to be plenty of room for a parachute and even an altimeter. I'll have to find some nice little hidey way <laughs> spots to drill holes for my altimeter. But it looks like that won't be a problem. Okay. Beautiful. Look at that. Try to get a bird's eye view right over the top. I barely fit it under the camera. Uh, you can see the launch lugs are nestled in here next to the SRB. It is interesting that they use a hook method 
whereas the Saturn V used the, the screw-on retainer. But maybe you wouldn't be able to do that because of the, the clustered engines being so close in. Um, but no, I'm, uh, I'm anxious to get this out and see what she'll do. All right, let's, uh, let's go fly. Five, four, three, two, one. Good shoot. Nice.